Let's assume that there are a total, total of n courses labeled from 0 to n minus 1. Some courses may have prerequisites. The list of prerequisites is specified such that if prerequisites A are this expression, you must take course B before A. Okay. Given the total number of courses and, and the list of the prerequisite pairs, return the course order a student should take to finish all the courses. If there are multiple valid orderings, then return any one of them. Okay, that can be a course in the 0 to n minus 1 range with no prerequisites. All right, so we have n, n, these are the prerequisites. So it means take 0 before you take 1, 0 before you take 2, I, I believe. So 0 must come before 1, must come before 2, your 1 must come before 3, okay? And 3 must come before 4, All right? And 1 and 2 can be swapped. Makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Zoom in a sec. So in four courses, uh, these are the dependencies. So this must be taken before this. This must be taken before this. This must be taken before this. Okay. And so on. In this case, we're dealing with numbers. I think in the first problem, we use letters to represent the courses. Yeah, we're using numbers. That's okay. That's all right. Okay, in this case, we even put five. How about that? It's hard to think of in your head. Let's look at the solution. So, we want to create a graph, essentially, and uh, use to topo sort like we always have, right? They're the defining source and sinks. So you can see that definition, I believe, in the intro video for this series, the current series. There's the topo sort series. And yeah they're rehashing a lot of things that we've seen before so let's not um, let's not concern ourselves with that we need to find the sources yeah this is very similar to the compilation order problem from two videos ago or three videos ago it should be two three videos ago we take the sources out uh, layer by layer right for search with cues and friends so let's let's look at how that is done in the code so um yeah this is what we're going to return i believe sorted out right? yep i'm right and then if n is less than or equal to zero basically just return an empty empty array we initialize here and then we uh, have the in degree and the graph so the in degree um, so for every single course that we have here, and I believe it goes from zero to n in general, or n minus one, we can specify set the in degree to zero. And in degree says, okay, how many courses are prerequisites, right? Now it's not zero for everything, but we initialize everything to zero. And that's just the start. And then for the graph, this is the adjacency list for the graph. So for every node, we list its dependencies. It's the things that uh, our children of it, right? So the things it's a depend that the nodes that have it as a dependency. Um, so like in this case, right? For one, one would have three and four, right? In its array over here, eventually, right? But we initialize everything with an empty array. And then this is where we're building the graph. We're looking through every prerequisite. And I believe they come they come in this shape, right? They come in this shape. So we're looking through each one and we have the parents, which is uh, the thing on the right. The child is the thing on the left for each tuple. Then for each parent, we push it the child. Okay, that's how we populate this array. Um, and then for the in degree, right? We increment the in degree. Everything starts off at zero. But then for every child that we see, for every child that has its particular parents, right, we bump it by one. And I think the video from two, the compilation order um, video has a better graphic, I feel, <clears throat> compared to the one they use here, pardon me. And so when we construct this graph, basically, right, which is represented by this adjacency list, we and populate the in degrees, over here, the hash map of in degrees, find all the sources. That's all the nodes with zero in degrees. So we create this queue and we're doing breadth first search. So it's a breadth first search 
like you should think of a queue when you think of breadth first search we look through the keys and then for each key right we check if the value is zero that means it's a source that means nothing comes into it like for instance in this case these have in degrees of zero because nothing is coming into it they're going into things we add them to the queue and that's how we take this layer out the way we're the way we're, we're doing here and when we do that we do that here while sources this thing that we just populated the length is not zero we dequeue the first thing there and get that vert ver vertex to get those two out um actually we'll get one out in this case we get but we'll probably take out one first um then we put it put that in here at the end of the sorted order because that's one valid item we can get then we for each child in it right we decrement its in degree so it's for instance the the child here three just lost one in degree so we would take that out over here with this line and then if it becomes zero we add it to the queue basically and we keep doing that until we exhaust everything here and then lastly we do a check uh, because if there's a cycle in the graph something if something leads to a cycle then it's not going to work and the sign is not going to work is that the sorted order here is going to be less than it's going to not equal to n at the end of the day when we're done we'll break out of this loop and so return an empty array and finally it was all that's said and done we just return sorted order so that's all there is to this solution link link to the code is in the description and when we look at the time complexity similar to the other problems where we use the queue the vertices, vertices plus the edges right or big old vertices plus the edges for the time complexity for the space we have the same thing because we're storing everything in an adjacency list and that's all there is to this thank you